Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Waalaikum salam Sayyidi, what is the significance of the first tarawih in 88 years at Hagia Sophia Masjid in Turkey this evening? Oh, this is the first one. Yeah, very beautiful masjid. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, we've, we've described before, inshaAllah, that Turkey holds a tremendous symbol. Turkey holds a tremendous symbol for Akhir Zaman and a tremendous importance for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and that the, the Khalifa and the ones whom represent Sayyidina Muhammad on earth is from Turkey. Means that the, that Khalifa position was never taken away, the dunya made it to be hidden. And the importance of regaining that is Izzatul Islam. When Allah want to bring the nation and prepare them for the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad what hap happens? It's common sense. So that man out there speaking rubbish is against Izzatul Islam and against Ahlus Sunnah wa Jama'ah and against Sayyidina Mahdi salam. We're not understanding that that position is the chair of authority and not taken by Allah, definitely not taken by Sayyidina Muhammad It is the position of authority and that authority must be regained so that the, the Izzat al-Islam as soon as you saw the crowning of that masjid, means Allah opened the door for Izzatul Islam to begin again. That that which they used as a museum and were baffled and thought that they were going to be European, Allah put back in their heart, no you're not European, you represent the Islamic nation and Alam al-Islam and the world of Islam and the universes of Islam and by having that back into its position, then these are big alamat, big signs, big signs of events to come and, and different things that will begin to happen. So this is a, a very important sign and, and very majestic sign for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi And so alhamdulillah for those whom are, are waiting for the beatific days of peace and immense realities, Imam Mahdi is not coming for any battle, he's coming to save mankind whom seem to be battling very good themselves. They're already trying to destroy each other and that's why we ask that, Ya Rabbi save us until Sayyidina Mahdi comes as a najat and to grant us good character. Why Allah won't to save anyone with bad character? Because it teaches that war is a punishment upon mankind. And I clean you from the hands of men whom have no mercy. So it means what? It's a big cleansing upon the earth when Allah make men to go into battle and have war. They're cleaning each other and now they describe it's by the hands of people whom have no mercy. These are not the battles of Prophet to bring the risalat and the message of Allah these are zulumat and oppression, one worse than the other, oppressing and oppressing humans, civilians, women and children. So these are not the, the kingdom coming, these are the, the dajjal battles upon the earth and the zulumat and oppression upon mankind. And we ask that Allah save us and protect us from this oppression. And the only saving and protection that awliyaullah described is good character. Because when Allah choosing, okay which one going, which one coming and that was in Nisfah Shaban for this year. The importance of Nisfah Shaban is that Allah going to grant the hisab, Sayyidina Muhammad will then intercede. That, Ya Rabbi from my nation let this one, this one, this one, this one to survive what difficulty is coming. Don't grant for them to be cleansed through hardships and, and affliction. 
mean so many things to be praying for that people are heedless that they're not praying. And these were the nights in which Allah are going to write the destiny for the coming year. And that's why we, we enter into Salatul Khair and pray Salatul Khair and, and pray all of these prayers that Allah and Nisf al-Shaban to write for us, that write for us Ya Rabbi the goodness, write for us that you be pleased with us and only Allah teach then make sure that you are of a good character, a loving character and the greatest love is Allah's Divinely Presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result of that love and that character, Allah make them to be ashiqeen. And Prophet described them, there's a people coming in the end that they love me and I love them. Those are the category that will be with Sayyidina Mahdi not violent angry people. Prophet did not attach his love to violent and angry people. So there's going to be people at the end that they are very angry, very bad akhlaq, they have very bad character, they, they akhma and angry at everyone, we're going to be with those. No, oh. said, they love me and they would do anything of a glimpse from my reality. Who talks like that? What masjid do you go that said that we would do anything for one one, Ya Rasulullah Umzara Nabi, isn't that Umzur Hala now Ishwaran? Just gaze upon me. Who sings like that? Ashiqeen. Because they can't live their life without the nazar of Prophet to be upon them. So then those are the category if Prophet loves them, then he's going to say, I want you to be with my most beloved grandchild coming onto this earth. So alhamdulillah, doesn't take rocket scientists to understand that they have to have good character. That good character saves them from affliction and azab inshaAllah, that coming on to this earth inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, how to recognize Imam Mahdi, give support to his mission before the global announcement from Allah? Oh, yeah, you, you know we've described the, the tariqah is not like these books that you read and, and videos that you hear. The concept of tafakkur and Allah is timeless. Everything has already continuously happening. Your physical just doesn't see it, right? So when Allah says, Sayyidina Mahdi, Sayyidina Mahdi is coming, then means his tajalli must always be. So if you're physical, you're waiting for a physical event and a physical sign, that's already too late, you, you lost there. But when Allah wants to guide a servant, teaches them that we are of a timeless reality, sit with them and where's that book? What's it called? Timeless reality. <laughs> there we go. Maybe there's a clue in the title. <laughs> timeless reality. Why? Because Allah's timeless, heavens are timeless. See we're not a dunya people waiting to see you know something collapse, oh now it's coming, then I'm going to hear this, then this coming. We're timeless people. Means that you learn how to meditate, contemplate, you broke the barrier of your physicality that you made your connection with the world of light and now the world of light begins to appear before your heart. And you see Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam and you don't have to guess who Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam is, you are with him. If you are connecting with the shaykhs and there are shaykhs on this earth that they know their name in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam. If you connect your heart with them, they take you into that presence and as soon as you make your tafakkur and contemplation, they see the majlis and in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam. They receive the dress of that majlis and that association. They don't have to guess, they're already connected. As a result of that connection, all the fires and all the realities and all the teachings are from that heart. We said right now the hearts of inspiration they're all under Imam Ali Salam. So all awliyaullah whatever they're inspiring alhamdulillah but the king of them 
that giving fires out for this guidance and this channel is Imam Ali as salam and his grandson is Imam Mahdi alayhi salam and that Fayez is receiving from Imam Mahdi salam to watch over that shaykh, send the Fayez to the shaykh and send the protection for that shaykh to begin to prepare the nation for that arrival. These teachings are a preparation from that majlis, otherwise they could never speak on this earth on these subjects. So it means they must be mahfuz and guarded that you speak, we got your back. And that is an association to direct people for what's coming upon this earth. And other associations they may have similar understandings. So once they connect then they understand very much what's happening on earth and what's coming on earth. At that time their spirituality become more and more stronger, more and more clear as to where they're supposed to be and what are the events that are coming. We described before that there will be protections from the unseen world, that no matter where you are this is not an event where you can think. You know Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jailani asked his students, here's something I want you to go sacrifice it where you think Allah can't see. That much this and everybody ran and one student came back and just sat there and said, why you're not going? He said, where can I go where Allah's not going to see me? He knew that was a funny question from the shaykh. But this our same life, where do you think you're hiding or going to go hide to avoid this situation? Should I go here? Should I go to the like a village and a bus stop in Turkey and live? Should I go to the Amazon jungle and find a house? You're running from the angel of death? There's no running from that. This is not something of a nature that you can hide and find a hiding place. There is no safety on this earth unless Allah guides. So we described before the events are coming, Allah will give a protection, a protection for those servants whom Allah wants to protect. And from unseen worlds they'll begin to appear and teach you, start breathing in. And as soon as they breathe in an immense energy will overtake them and shield them. At that time they release an atomic bomb upon that person, nothing will happen to them. The jinn will be involved in protecting whom Allah want to protect. And when they have no food and no ability to eat, again that kingdom will enter into this earth and begin to teach them how to sustain themselves miraculously. So Allah they plan but Allah's plan is far more powerful, He wrote the whole plan. So means there are preparations that have been made but when the events take place then those preparations will be enacted and activated. So there's not a fear for the believer to think, where I'm going to go, where, what, what uh, place in the jungle I'm going to go hide. All you have to do is have good character. If you don't have that character there's no way to hide yourself from Allah because Allah's commanding everything. Allah's, Allah's writing who lives, who goes, who, who, who drops and who benefits. So there's no hiding from Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi there's a hadith saying, Mm. One sign is when judgment day will come, the sun will rise from the west. What does it mean? <laughs> that the Ishraqiyun, that the significance of the sun is the heart. We've been describing the whole night now that. The, the king of all sons, Shams al Arifin is Sayyidina Muhammad And every believer whom takes a path towards realities will begin to understand their head is a moon and their heart should be a sun. And if they submit and begin taking these courses towards character, we described last night that they want their heart to be lit means they want their heart to become eternal, not a temporary candle. 
that burns and with the wind their faith can be flickered out. So when that light becomes eternal and Allah lights their heart, now a sun has been brought into existence. And that's when Prophet described that, my companions they're like stars, suns because the star has no mass. And any one of them you follow will lead you to the guidance. Means that this was a path in which to become a sun. And as a result of being a sun, they become ishraqiyoon, means that their heart is now rising in Divinely Presence and they will begin to illuminate a dark earth. Because as dunya and shaitans begin to make fitna, they take away the sun from this earth, they take away light from this earth. What we call zulumat and oppression actually is darkness, zalim and zulum is a darkness. So when oppression comes means physically everything is dark, there's no illumination, no light. But Allah plans through these plans. But there are servants whom their training and their heart are illuminations and that they're ishraqiyoon, that their hearts are rising in these realities and in these knowledges and they illuminate more powerful than the sun that we see in our galaxy because that's an imitated station. The, وَلَقَدْ كَرَمْنَا بَنِي Adam. Allah said, I have honoured your creation. But He didn't say, I honoured the sun. The sun is uh, Ayatul Akbar, my great sign. Well, you are وَلَقَدْ كَرَمْنَا you are, you are my honoured creation. I gave to you much more than that because you carry the reality of a soul within you. Means then this reality of becoming the rising suns and this dawah and these teachings are in the western hemisphere because the Islamic world is in a maqrib, is in a setting that the eastern world their realities and knowledges have all set. They've given away their realities and they took instead dunya. And Allah now will flip the rising of the sun instead of that knowledge was rising from the east. Allah flips the hemispheres in this world that know those knowledges now rise only from the west and in the east they have settled and become darkened and aggressive. And that's why you see eastern cultures that were very spiritual are now the leading consumers of gold, India, China and the Middle East. All they want to do is buy, buy, buy means they've traded away their spirituality. And there is no spirituality back there, if you talk there they cut your head off. So means all spirituality will be then in the West and realities will be taught in the West. And as a result these realities are such a high level, as soon as they teach it, it dresses the soul of the servant with immense, immense lights where in the East if you try to open your mouth about those teachings, they're very aggressive against talking like that. So it means that that is the symbol of the shift of the earth where the sun used to rise from the east and set on the west, Allah shifted now. The realities will rise from the west and all the setting of the sun will be on the east, inshaAllah. Uh, as alaykum. Wa rahmatullah wa We have the book, The Rising Sun of the West yeah. also. What does that look like in case? Oh, you have it on 360. <laughs> Haj Khalid has it on 360 and Zishan. Yes, sir. Sayyidi, the souls of myself and my family, yeah. were they connected as a family prior to this life, before we entered into this reality? What was the relationship? Wallahi I don't know, <laughs> this is not for me, yeah. Most important is to, to know that nothing comes together in this world that wasn't there in the spiritual world, yeah. So you, you, you can't be with someone that's not there. Now are you at the highest reality that's something different? 
So the, the reality that we're asking for is to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to be in the presence of awliyaullah. So all of these things become resolved when I take a path in which to know myself. When I know myself I'll know everything about myself as a result of knowing about my character, myself, my being, my submission, my characteristics, I draw closer to the understanding of my Lord. And that becomes the answering of, what was my promise, what was my life, who was I supposed to be, who was I supposed to be with? So you can be in life young, you're with somebody but you're not supposed to be with them, that was only a temporary station and that your reality is written for something else. So everybody has many friends they've come across in life, you think that Allah didn't write that and you met them accidentally? No, but Allah wrote every incident and every meeting, a train that exists on a track has no way to stop at anything that doesn't have a track. Means Allah's written the track and everything we went through in our life was written. Did we always make the right choice? That's where we go back, where Allah gives you a will that you turn right or left. You turn left, a lot of difficulties came your way. Had you turned right, many openings would have come and they were inspired, oh I maybe shouldn't do this tonight and they don't do it and they're safe. Some say, no I'll do it, they get in an accident. So it means Allah because of free will He writes the track and then at any moment there's a switch in which they can move left and right. As soon as they move right Allah then provides a path in that direction and had they moved left Allah would have made a path in that direction, it means everything written. But whom I'm supposed to be, how am I supposed to be, how am I supposed to connect then go first for the highest. Know ourselves and keep yourself connected to Sayyidina Muhammad That light begin to dress the soul, bless the soul, connect with the shaykhs to know ourselves and then begin to analyze what are my characteristics, what are my, my bad… my badness is that which governs me right now, it can't be Allah otherwise it would be walking on water, what's governing me? And then I begin to understand all my character defects. When I sit and I meditate, ah okay why is like this, why is like this, why am I feeling like this? And that's what's important to get to know ourselves so that we can reach towards these realities to get to know our Lord and that which commands us inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh What is the who? Is it related at all to the Kawthar? Please forgive me for The who? And the Kawthar? What's that? What does that mean? What is the who? What is the who? Who? is he and he is Sayyidina Muhammad the highest and he's Hadi Allah, he's the guide of Allah and he carries the secret of wow. He carries the secret of wow for wadud. So this who, highest who is Allah's guide. The guide to love and was created from love and is the hidayat and guidance of Allah the hadan Allah, nahtadillah and hadan Allah. There's no guidance except through the guidance of Allah Allah is making reference to Prophet There is no guidance unless Prophet is guiding and that's why in ikhlas and sincerity and Surat al-Ikhlas is devoid of any discussion, anything from dunya. No command, no orders, no, no nothing from dunya. So what is in Allah is describing in Surat Al-Ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ قُلْ هُوَ So قُلْ is a speech, Allah's speeching, Allah's speech is to someone because there's one speaking, one spoken to when Allah is saying قُلْ هُوَ so means then this is a 
eternal reality from Qawbu Qawsaini wa Adana in which La ilaha illallah is a who that can never be seen. And that reality of who is dressing that which can be seen known as Muhammadun Rasulullah So who of Allah dresses the huwa of Sayyidina Muhammad So that is a power, that's an energy, that's a reality in which to be dressed from that essence. When you want the essence from Allah it has to come to you from Muhammadun Rasulullah and Kawthar is something different, that's the fountain of all these oceans and realities. So Prophet is giving what we described of that waterfall of Manzar Qur'an, that fountain of abundance because everything is a light. But for us to understand because of our mind's inability to perceive that which we haven't seen. Like we described a table from heaven. In the world of light is what the… is kebabs of light and grapes of light. It's an analogy for us to understand you're going to be dressed with an abundance. So when Prophet is the light of Allah's immense heavens, the soul of Prophet is reflecting that reality of Allah and from the center of that power is the speech of Allah coming out. Means anything from that light that reaches to you is kawthari. And that's what Allah describing the soul of Prophet ﷺ, you are the kawthar. You know, atainnak al kawthar, we have given your kathir beyond any, if Allah says vast, it's beyond anything we can understand of vastness. Because Allah is saying it, that you are, I've given every vastness to me, I've given you everything. I have given to you and subjected to you whatever is in heavens, whatever is on earth and whatever is between them that you could imagine, all I have subjected to you. And the secret of the kawthar is that fountain that every light coming from Prophet is for us the kawthari and the fountain. And that's why the end of this journey ends on the twelfth month and the twelfth month times the power of nine is Surat Al-Kawthar 108. And the reality of 108 is the Kawthar, inna atainnaka al-Kawthar. InshaAllah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Azza ma yasifoon wa salaamun al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. إلى شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أصحابه الكرام ولا مشايخنا في طريقة نشبندية العالية وسائر وصداتنا وصدقنا الفاتحة. <تصفيق>